Could I maybe start by asking, does anyone have an automated system in their hospital that they're using? A dispenser counting or some sort of triggered uh, automated system? Just hand up? No, okay. So we're all pretty much in the same spot, which is good. Um, all right, so, uh, and that's a perfect talk to follow on to after emphasizing the importance of, um, of visibility of auditors. So uh, I'm gonna talk about um, just my take on the, on the purpose of auditing very briefly and then a tour through various approaches, direct observation, and then observation with mobile devices, um, just quite briefly given Karen has spoken about that already. Uh, video monitored direct observation, electronic dispensers, and automated monitoring networks before some final comments. Uh, so this is really from Hugo Sachs, it's his human factors approach to, to thinking about why we have auditing, which is um, that there's two problems with, with hand hygiene, uh, which are related but different in that hand hygiene lacks a direct observable result and hand hygiene is not rewarded with a tangible positive result, but rather with the absence of a negative result, which kind of is a confusing thing to think about, but this sort of illustrates it in that if you, your hands are not cleaned, then you might end up with a healthcare associated infection, but there's gonna be a delay. And you're never gonna know that your unclean hands were the ones that led to that. Uh, whereas if you do clean your hands, um, there is no sort of positive reward. You don't get a nice warm feeling necessarily um, uh, about that um, because of an absence of a bad outcome. And so performance feedback is about closing that loop. And I think that's, that's been said a few times, obviously this afternoon already, um, but uh, important I think to keep in mind why we're collecting the data, which is to change behavior um, as has been emphasized before by, by others. And again, um, it fits just as a one part of the multimodal um, promotion and also as a, as a core component. Uh, so how should we audit um, and perform feedback and how do electronic systems fit into this process? Uh, well, to go through the present concept to start with direct observation, so not gonna go into any details obviously, uh, but in terms of pros, and again, you're all very familiar, I think, um, incredibly familiar with these, but uh, just to go through briefly, in terms of the data we collect, it's clinically relevant, I think that's, an important thing about direct observation is that the moments, the definitions of moments were based on a conceptual model of when organisms are transmitted or when there's an opportunity for introducing infection into a, a clean site of a patient. So it's clinically relevant. Uh, and there's also extra information that we collect, like technique has been mentioned, um, bare below the elbows if we have that policy, uh, glove use, etc. cetera. Uh, and then in terms of impact, and again, this is following on from Narelle's um, excellent talk. It's really what it's all about, isn't it? That it's an opportunity for feedback, um, to think more broadly about the work environment, about workflows, uh, and also if it's frontline staff, ward staff that are doing the auditing, it's an important opportunity for them to own the hand hygiene program and to feel like they have responsibility for, for hand hygiene performance. Uh, on the downside, again, we all know about the, um, the resource intensiveness of it. It's the number one, I guess, criticism of direct observation, uh, training and validation of auditors, time spent auditing, auditing uh, although maybe there are some gains to be made, as uh, Karen pointed out. Uh, and, and then we're capturing only a small proportion of total hand hygiene activity. And, and this review by John Boyce uh, recently suggested that uh, direct observation um, is at most going to have 5% capture of all hand hygiene opportunity. Uh, and in particular, uh, we're missing out often on um, weekends and, and overnights. And then there's also the potential for bias as has been pointed out, Hawthorne effect uh, and observer bias. Uh, so why do we consider electronic monitoring? Well, um, maybe we can free up some time for other things. Uh, maybe we can capture some more hand hygiene activity. Uh, maybe we can avoid the Hawthorne effect if that's what we want to do, although some might argue that actually the Hawthorne effect is part of why we do the direct observation, it's part of the behavior change. Uh, and then maybe there's some fun to be had here and this concept of gamification and introducing game type concepts into, into this um, might be an intervention in itself. Uh, so again, I, I won't talk much about direct observation with mobile device, but I guess this is a, a, the simplest way of incorporating electronic data collection into hand hygiene auditing. Uh, and it's really just direct observation plus, I guess. Um, so uh, trying to get away some of the, 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 the um, limitations. Um, so then the third route I wanna talk about was video monitored direct observation. 
which is, you know, some of these studies that have looked at setting up cameras in the ward, usually the camera is narrow view focused at the dispenser or at the tap, uh, and then compliance that, that image is, is recorded and compliance can be reviewed and audited subsequently. And again, this is sort of direct observation plus rather than being purely electronic data collection. Uh, so this is a sort of the, the paper that which is discussed frequently, I think, with this technique from the US, a 17 bed ICU, and they uh, had sensors to trigger um, uh, the camera when, um, when people entered rooms. Uh, there was uh, video being taken and auditing was done continuously in India, although this was a hospital in, in the US, and, and the feedback happened live. So there was an embedded feedback component. Um, so uh, this, is, this is actually from the paper. This is a board which appears in the unit. Um, it's sort of, you know, great, great shift, sort of fist pumping type stuff. Uh, and then uh, emails intermittently as well with results. So um, this is a very real time um, active um, performance feedback. Uh, and this is the effect that they saw in this particular hospital, going from a compliance of about 10% uh, to uh, close to 90%. That's how they recorded it. Okay, and this is another paper which uh, has a different approach. So this is in a hemodialysis unit. And I think what I've seen in reviewing some of these papers more recently is that often these electronic approaches are used in non-standard board settings because for some reason the environment lends itself to uh, a different approach. And so there were two cameras in this uh, hemodialysis ward which recorded all um, activity. Uh, and then during the week, the infection control team just randomly selected 10 minute periods from the previous 48 hours each day to review. Uh, so they weren't doing continuous um, review of all activity. It was just a more targeted. Uh, and you can see here, um, this is the compliance um, from direct observation and this is using the, um, uh, the camera system. Uh, and I wanted, what I wanted to illustrate with this slide was just that they were able to do individualized feedback with this and, and record the identity of individual healthcare workers, which is something that we can do with direct observation, but perhaps don't, don't often do. Um, so in terms of this approach of video, video monitored direct observation, some advantages are that it's similar to direct observation in that you rec can record the five moments, something which is clinically meaningful uh, and, um, and other factors. Um, and there's some advantages, though, potentially over direct observation in that you have auditing of overnights and weekends, and you can potentially avoid the, the Hawthorne effect if that's what you want to do. Uh, on the downside, there's the cost, and this is sort of comes up each time with these automated devices. So that first paper, uh, the installation was for one ward was 50,000 US dollars, and that obviously doesn't include um, ongoing maintenance. Um, and then you might have someone with their back to the camera, or, and there's privacy implications, obviously, as well. Uh, so that brings us on to the fourth um, approach, which, which is electronic dispenser counters. Uh, and uh, what they're really doing, is, as you know, I think, you've probably seen these papers, is just counting um, when and where um, a dispenser is pumped. Um, so there is no, the, the big uh, limitation here is that there's no um, denominator, there's no uh, counting of opportunities. Um, and this, I, 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 this, I found, this was quite interesting. This is the first paper that I found um, looking at automated data collection from 1984. Uh, this is a paper from a hospital in the UK. Um, and um, they, they made the point, uh, I think, um, importantly, that um, they don't want to present with these automated systems an electrical hazard because of putting um, these equipment near water. Uh, so that was good to think about. Um, and what they actually did was to um, uh, work out when a healthcare worker was standing near a sink by putting a set of scales underneath um, in front of the sink. Uh, and then um, in terms of detecting when they were using a towel or, um, or soap, they put a microphone. They, in fact, they say they, um, they used, um, could be mounted with adhesive tape. Um, they mounted a microphone so that they could tell when, the, when, the, when there was noise being made. Um, and, and just to show how far we've come, another thing from this paper was that they talked about the fact that they thought that on the basis of this data, um, a sink in each six bedded bay would give a greater incentive for nurses to wash their hands between patient contacts and also increase the time to available for, the, for other nursing duties. So, yeah, well, that's a good point too, yeah, yeah. Um, 
So yeah, I guess one potential use of this data is to look at where people are performing hand hygiene, think about placement of, of, um, of dispensers. Um, but the, the downside, as I said, is that the denominator you're looking at here, or the measure, is um, how many times people are, are performing disinfection per hour. Um, there's no measure of moments, so there's no measure of compliance, unless you add in another source of data. Uh, so that's what some papers have done, including this one, um, which was from an outpatient department uh, in a hospital in Japan, uh, where they mounted 100, they had 130 electronic counting devices um, installed during a renovation. And they made the assumption that you should be performing hand hygiene at least once per patient that comes into outpatients. And so they used that as the denominator. Uh, and um, so that was why they thought that this approach was suited to outpatients. They had direct observation throughout the rest of the hospital, but just in outpatients, they used this approach. Uh, and you can see that what they're estimating here is, is compliance, but it's based on this assumption that the denominator is one for each patient visit. Um, and they, they showed an, an improvement um, based on that. So some um, pros of this sort of approach is that you have, again, continuous monitoring, monitoring potentially avoiding the whole fallen effect, again, if that's what you want to do. Uh, and then some cons, the costs, again, um, and the fact that you don't have a measure of the denominator, that you can potentially extrapolate and make assumptions, but uh, it, it's a proxy. Um, and finally, there doesn't, most of the time, there's not a real-time intervention, unless you're incorporating it into a more complex system, which is what we'll move on to for the last um, uh, sort of approach to look at, which is these automated hand hygiene monitoring networks. Um, and there's all sorts of shapes and sizes of these in the literature. Uh, but these generally are multi-component systems that aim to detect when a healthcare worker enters a room or some sort of version of the health patient zone, and when they perform hand hygiene, and, and then also potentially some sort of an embedded reminder about performing hand hygiene or an intervention. And there's a whole heap of different technologies that are used, probably most frequently in radio frequency identification, which is in the badges. So there's a, an emission of um, an ID um, from the badge for healthcare workers, which is detected by these machines, and then all sorts of other um, technologies. So this is one example, uh, and sorry, this is uh, published uh, just this year from France, um, where they're demonstrating that they were detecting people walking into the room and out of the room, and then also into the patient zone and out of the patient zone, um, using these um, ground antennae here to detect that, and then also incorporating um, uh, some detection of, of, of hand hygiene actions. This is a, a study from uh, Singapore, and they used ultrasound um, emitters to define a patient zone, and then also transmitters around the dispenser for alcohol-based hand rub. Um, there was this ID, ID um, for the healthcare worker, and basically compliance was registered when hand hygiene occurred within, with six seconds of entering and one minute of so this should be within six, six seconds of entering and one minute of exiting the patient's zone. And there was a reminder beep that sounded if they were non-compliant. So you can see that there's assumptions here. This won't always be a moment, and it might potentially be a little bit annoying sometimes if it's, if it's not exactly what's needed. Um, and this was a randomized controlled trial, in fact. And uh, they recorded over a million uh, hand hygiene opportunities. So you could quickly beat Hand Hygiene Australia and the number of hand hygiene moments you had to record in your database, Lindsay. Um, uh, but the quality might not be quite as good. So their baseline compliance was 30%. Um, and um, their intervention, despite all of that, uh, was pretty modest at 7% um, improvement. Um, but they did find that healthcare workers in general thought that this was a useful approach. They tolerated it. They didn't have particular objections to wearing these um, uh, badges and potentially thought it would help things. Um, and I just wanted to mention this, this concept of gamification and the fact that one of the advantages of this sort of system is that healthcare workers can have their own individual data fed back to them. Um, and as we know from counting steps um, and how, people, how much people get into that, there is the potential to sort of link into that game type approach. Um, I wanted to, I'm getting sort of close to the end, but just wanted to point out this article, which again came out this year in 2017, um, looking at the implementation of this sort of system in three hospitals in the US. And you can see the numbers that they were talking about here of um, badges and bed beacons and stretcher beacons and monitor dispensers. 
uh, and the fact that they were, they were collecting over 200,000 hand hygiene events per facility per month. Um, so we don't get a picture of how much this sort of system would cost because the materials were provided by the manufacturer. Uh, and that saw an increase from 84% to 80% in terms of hand hygiene compliance. But the reason why I think this paper is, is, is really interesting is because most of the focus is about actually what to think about when you're implementing this sort of system, the tr kind of troubles that they ran into and how they overcame those problems. Um, so that's worth having a look at if you're thinking about it. So uh, automated monitoring networks, um, one of the advantages is that there's minimal time required for auditing once it's installed. Uh, data collection is continuous. There's no Hawthorne effect. Um, you can have healthcare worker specific results, which I think would be interesting information to have, wouldn't it, in terms of, again, thinking about um, punishing people who are non-compliant and accountability. If you have those people who are serial non-compliers, uh, who are not performing hand hygiene at all, or on the other hand, potentially identifying champions as well. Um, and in, the, in terms of impact, you can have embedded uh, feedback, real-time, uh, and uh, real-time reminders, potentially, this concept of gamification. Uh, and one of the advantages which is sometimes mentioned by these papers is the fact that there's no observer in the room, and from their perspective, that's an advantage for, for, from a patient um, privacy perspective. Uh, on the downside, obviously, you have cost again. Um, in terms of data collection, you're not collecting moment two and three, and that's, I think, most of us would agree, reasonably important. Um, the, the, what you're getting is not five moments, it's a sort of um, uh, algorithm which approximates it. Uh, and so there's some um, uh, problems there which are highlighted in that paper that I mentioned a moment ago. Uh, and then you may have problems potentially with, with healthcare worker acceptance and importantly, again, referring to the previous presentation, there's no one there on the ground as the visible mind are about um, culture change and, um, and education. So in summary, um, in electronic systems are, are maturing pretty rapidly. There's a lot of them in the, um, pub, in the literature over the last few years. Um, they do offer some potential advantages, but they do have problems as well. Uh, and there's not yet a lot of evidence, I think, or the evidence is mixed about the sort of impact that you can expect from, um, from the capital outlay that you'll have. Um, and I've put down there some questions which I thought were probably worth considering, the most important one being down the bottom, which is how does this, this is not sort of a magic bullet which is gonna be everything else in hand hygiene promotion is stopped and you just have this system. It's sort of how do you fit this into, um, into the multimodal promotion? Uh, and this was a, a um, uh, a, um, a recent um, concern from, from Didier Pitay in Geneva about the potential that you might find yourself just collecting lots of data that doesn't mean a lot. Um, so my take on this from, from having reviewed it for, from this, uh, for this presentation was that rather than perhaps like the title being direct observation versus electronic data, data collection, maybe we could be thinking about how these sort of technologies might be integrated into the system and might complement um, direct observation as well. And these are two interesting reviews uh, about automated systems if you're interested for, for further uh, review. So that's, that's it. Okay.